example of the circuses, which is my first example. For some reason, it popped in my head, right? So um, circuses are wonderful. If I put, this was our first case, right? C, which means circuses are wonderful. Um, so in this case, I'd say circuses are not wonderful. That's how I could write it up on the board. Just negation C. Circuses are wonderful and Joe loves circuses. That was our other example, right? So that's C and J, right? Circuses are wonderful and John likes them. Disjunctions, right? You could say circuses are wonderful or John likes circuses, which is a weird sort of phrase, but we'll just stick with it since that's what we started with. So circuses are wonderful or Joe likes them, right? Here's the conditional. Let's say if Joe likes circuses, then circuses are wonderful. So here we could put it like this, right? So if Joe likes circuses, then they're wonderful. And by the way, this the first one in here is called the antecedent, and the second one is called the consequent, right? Because it's consequent of this one, right? So you, and that's an important distinction there. In the biconditional, we say. Circuses are wonderful if and only if Joe likes them. So this could look like this. If and only if Joe likes them. And you'll see when we get to 6.2, I'm going to define these um, in terms of their truth values. So we're going to get into that later. But I just want you to know what these are and know that these are the key symbols that you're going to have to learn. Okay? So let's erase this. The next thing you have to learn to formulate is um, we also have to introduce what are called, well, not what are called, but you know them, parentheses, brackets, etc., right? Because um, we can combine, we can have extremely complicated statements, right? So let me give you an example. Let's put, right, so these are our brackets. Let's put, these are well-formulated formulations, and these are not well-formulated formulations. You can see I'm using the negation up there. They're not well-formulated. So a well-formulated statement would be, for instance, C and J, right? A not well formulated statement would look like this C and J and R. Right? That's not well formulated because at the core of it, we always have to know what the primary operator is going to be. And in this case, I don't really know what's working. Right? So a well formulated statement would be something like this C and J and R. Right? That would then be well formulated because here I can say that this is the primary operator actually where here I can never point to a primary operator. So in order for it to be well formulated, you have to essentially know what the, what the primary operator is. Another thing you should see is that now is negation R, right? Unlike all of the other connectives, negation only concerns the one thing, and that's the thing that comes directly, be directly before, right? So here the negation really refers only to the R, right? You can't write this. That doesn't make any sense, right? That's something like Roger is a happy person, not, doesn't mean anything, right? This is not well formulated. So the negation always comes prior. And with all the other connectives, the disjunction, the conjunction, um, the conditional, the biconditional, you need at least two variables or two symbols. And I'm gonna be using those terms um, to talk about the propositions. And I may sometimes say variables, I may sometimes use the word symbol, either way. I'm just referring to something like the R, right? So let me give you another example. All right, but let me just start with a really bad one, right? Which would look like this. Not R and T if and only if P if and only if T or L. Right? Um, and then I just said P. Right? This is a really badly formulated Roy. But where is it? Oh, let me move it over a little bit for you. Right? Why is this badly formulated? First, negation R, that makes sense. Right? Roger doesn't like rabbits or something. And so this part works fine. And actually, this is the primary operator. But you can see when we get inside the parentheses, or in this case, the bracket, we have no idea what the primary operator is. We have two biconditionals. And then we have a disjunction, right? So in order to make this actually work, we'd have to do something like this, right? Something like that. Then maybe we could make it work and it would actually make sense. And by the way, we wouldn't, there's the P here. We don't need parentheses on that P 
but we also need to know how it relates to the rest of this, and we don't see a relation, right? Um, so this is badly formulated, right? A way to write this correctly would essentially look like this. T if and only if P if and only if T or L and then let's put all of this in parentheses let's put A and P right so this is actually really sort of complicated looking right um, but really this is actually formulated correctly because you can always look at any two or I'll move it over so you can see a little better because you can always look at any two of the variables and see what the main operator that's governing their relation is that's really what you have to do and if you read chapter six if it goes over and you actually have to in the exercises you actually have to go through and pick these out so and really this kind of comes from practice but it's really very common sense and um, if you're used to doing mathematics and algebra it's it's um a lot of the same sort of uh, intuitive rules are at play. So we'll stop there um, and I'll do 6.2.